This might be the shortest chapter Fujimoto has done. 22 pages, but you can read it in under a minute, mostly because it's pretty artwork. And when I say pretty artwork, I mean six double spreads. If you don't know what they are, these are two pages combined together as a full art piece. Not often do authors do this. Some might do one every week, once a month, etc. Uh, and the style and creativity that goes into it, obviously extremely different. These are a lot bigger, a lot more stressful and a lot more time consuming. So one is difficult enough. Six in a two week time frame is ridiculous. This is still technically a 22 page chapter, but the amount of artistry going into it was brilliant. Very little dialogue, but all of the art that you would want. And it is absolutely glorious. To me, this feels like Fujimoto just having fun. Like he really just wanted to draw some buildings being thrown across the sky with Denji and Asa riding up it on the chainsaw motorbike just going crazy. It's super creative and playful but fun at the same time. And yeah there's danger involved, you have these tentacles chasing them, a big worm, you have fall coming into play so there is a lot of things going on but it does just feel like a great time and something that he might have wanted to do for a while. I would say it's been a moment since we've had uh, Fujimoto express himself this clearly and just playing around with artwork and going bombastic with it. However, here's a timeline, right? You have Denji and Asa on the motorbike. They're running away from these tentacles. They know that they have to outrun this for a long time. We don't know how long, technically, but theoretically, if they can outrun it for a decent amount of time, they'll get away. They'll be able to escape this dimension. Now, the only reason that they know this is because of a fake chainsaw man that somehow, some way, magically has all of the rights and perfect information for a primordial fear. Now, personally, I don't think a lot of people have thought about how big of an issue that is. Regardless of who this person is, for whatever reason, they know a ton of information on how to deal with primordial fears. Now, primordial fears are very different. I think back to darkness just for a moment and imagine someone supplying information to beat the darkness devil. It sounds ridiculous. Now, fall may operate on a different spectrum, but that doesn't mean that they can't get violent. They're very, very strong. They are extremely powerful. And while not as aggressive as dark, could easily get there if they wanted to. So don't underestimate her. And this chapter is a prime example of why you shouldn't. Because as much as this worm and the tentacles are a very big issue and provide a constant pressure uh, for Denji and Asa on this motorbike, the building that gets thrown at them, a literal skyscraper, is because of fall. Now realistically, I would like to think that she could kill these people right here, right now. That instead of just lifting up the building and throwing it, which is kind of her attempt to do so, I'd say maybe, why not just lift them up off the ground. Do you see what I mean? Like take what they're riding on right now, lift it up and just throw it into the sky and then throw something else at them while they're in the sky. I'm not here to argue battle semantics, but I think Fool's approach is very much just lackluster. They don't seem all too entertained by this, maybe a little bit aggressive, enough to throw a whole building, but not enough to fully committing to blowing them off the face of the earth because obviously she wants Asa. She wants to cook this meal. Sounds weird when it comes off the back of her throwing a whole building, I know, but I assume assumes she expects Chainsaw Man to be able to navigate it rather easily and that he won't go down without a fight. Now of course all of this is accompanied by some very beautiful panel work, a lot of double spreads, a lot of just momentum really. Think of a city that's normal and then think of parts of it that's caving in on itself, stuff getting thrown around, Chainsaw Man riding a motorbike on different surfaces of buildings just trying to get away from this worm. Now the worm really takes a spotlight for me and I kind of want to leave the discussion for what I think it is even though I've already talked about it, but with more detail now, towards the end. They showcase some very interesting things that I want to talk about. So much so that Denji is a little bit confused by it. So they manage to escape that partially, not before they're confronted by a massive building being thrown at them. Obviously Fall is here to play now. It makes me curious on where or what happened to the fake Chainsaw Man. And if you try and follow that train of thought, you go back to the same questions. Who is it? Why are they here? What do they want? How do they have this type of information? Are they connected? connected or correlated to everything else that's going on, such as Fami or Yoshida for example. So we don't know, but eventually we'll probably find out. I already have a full idea and theory video to 
talking about who I think the fake chainsaw men are, that is indeed plural, if you are interested of course. More beautiful artwork, Denji riding through this building that's just been thrown at him, and then right at the end, surprise surprise, coming out the building, diving directly into the mouth of this worm. For the first time I think it actually has opened up, and it's like a creature on top of the worm, and then the worm underneath it, it's like its own separate mouth, so it's like two entities, even though they're kind of combined together. Now because we have a chapter next week, I wouldn't be surprised if they actually do get eaten by this worm, right? And you have this in the tunnel type situation where they're stuck within this worm and they got to find their way out. So it might be kind of an intimate, somewhat bonding moment, weirdly enough, for Denji and Asa. There's also the complete opposite of this where they just bypass the worm and don't get eaten and maybe a fake chainsaw man rocks up and they start to fight both the worm and fall in their entirety. For me, however, fighting doesn't really make sense currently because you don't know what this worm is, what they're capable of, and clearly they are entirely destructive, very difficult to kill. This is a powerful devil. Fall, you're not going to get rid of, that's a primordial fear. So their only option is legitimately to try and escape and run away and keep running away. They could fight to try and slow the worm down, but then again, you're diving into unknown territory. You don't know what this devil is. So I'm going to gamble on the fact that they might get eaten, but survive the process. And you kind of go through the beats of Denji and Asa becoming closer because they're in the vicinity of death, currently being digested by a worm. I feel it sounds interesting if you put it that way, but I'm always excited to see what Fujimoto does. Now what I really wanted to talk about is this worm. What is it? Why is it so strong? What is it capable of? We have very little information about all of this. We know that Fall is serving this worm specifically. We know that Fall, this worm, and this whole Nostradamus prophecy uh, is meant to give birth to something. And if you know how worms work, follow that same train of thought. Something most likely is going to be hatched, spawned, evolved, or birthed in some way, shape, or form. What could it be? We don't know. It might not even be a thing, but just with all of the implementations and the notes that there is something bigger and more scarier out there that Nostradamus' prophecy is currently predicting, and then you have organizations like Yoshida prepping for the worst, you have Fami timing her appearance very accurately alongside alongside fall and everything else going on, alongside a fake chainsaw man, alongside seeing abilities we've never seen before, it all just fits perfectly within the legitimacy of the prophecy. So if you thought it was fake to begin with, I feel like it's proven itself to be true in a lot of regards. Does that mean the birth of something much scarier is going to take place? I don't know. There's a big question mark around that. But basically what I think this worm is currently, and something that Denji said and you kind of see visually happen throughout this chapter, is that this worm is able to move around the body. It's able to spawn off its tendrils, right? And it's able to spawn different tools and things, or at least a hammer that we've seen, just a singular hammer, to try and swipe a Denji with, to try and use to attack. Now my question is, why would you wield a hammer? I know it sounds silly in the grand scheme of things, but you have all of these tendrils that have spikes on it, this worm has a massive mouth, why would you use a hammer? And I thought back to the theory that I created. This worm could, and stick with me here, be the fear of fears. As silly as this sounds, which even though I feel like fits right up Fujimoto's alley and how much he could play around with it, is a legitimate thing. It is a subconscious fear, funny enough. It's your body adapting and recognizing different stems of fear. The flight or fight response is kind of loosely connected with it. In Chainsaw Man terms, a primordial fear. In this case, if I were to think of something that could be born, that is the big of the big, the worst thing that you can imagine, the most horrifying, disgusting thing, it is either death or the fear of fears. The reason that I talk about it being able to morph and create itself is that maybe if it ingests different fears, you feed it different fears, whether it be the fear from humans themselves or other devils, it can actually use them. It can become quite literally the fear of fears. So that hammer might just be the fear of hammers and the pain and destruction that's associated with it. Now that might sound like a stretch. I don't think Genghis Khan is going to be born, even though that would be kind of weirdly funny, but the fear of fears fits kind of right at home here. The one thing that can't actually be a physical entity because it has to be fed other fears. The more I think about it, the more it kind of just steamrolls into something that could be a possibility. It's weird to me that all the horsemen so far that we have seen have some tools of their own. So why not primordial fears? And if you were to think naturally of a scale of power or ascension, why would a primordial fear work for a lower devil? Like why 
why would Fall create this thing unless it's going to be infinitely more powerful than Fall herself? It doesn't always have to be like that, but it just currently and somewhat logically, it makes the most sense for me at least. This is a complete overthink. I can tell you that. I understand. But I love talking about this idea because we really don't know the full scale of Nostradamus' prophecy. It's here. It's in motion. It's a legitimate thing. We still don't know what it's going to cause. I don't think this event is going to be a one and done thing because I feel like it's going to shave the entirety of the story for the most part. Something that Denji will have to face, his fears, something that Asa will have to face. Do you see how it clicks kind of nicely? I know it feels like I'm trying to sell you this idea at the moment, so I'll stop. But regardless, beautifully drawn, beautifully conceptualized, just fun and crazy and destructive. And I'm excited to see where this all goes. I don't even care if this idea is completely wrong. It's just fun thinking about it. It could be the furthest thing away from the truth and I'm all for it to be that way. It ain't that serious. Also, why the, why the worm tongue looking like that though? You know, what's he doing with that? Why is it that big and long?